Probably the most valuable and important application of the whole quadratic equation thing is gravity. You know, gravity is an amazing thing. You know, if you take something, you can see gravity right there. There's gravity. It's amazing. It's sometimes loud, too. But actually, when things fall, or if you throw something up and then watch it come down, that path is actually dictated by a parabolic kind of curve, or a parabola, or actually a quadratic. Those are all the same things. And so, in fact, anytime you throw something up and watch it come down, you're actually working with, maybe without even knowing it, you're working with quadratics. So quadratics aren't as weird as you may think. In fact, let's take a look at an application and see a quadratic literally in action. OK, so what do we have here? Well, we have a disgruntled algebra student. Not good, but also fairly popular, unfortunately. So we have a disgruntled algebra student, and she's so fed up with the whole course, she decides she's going to take her book out to a field and just give it a good hard kick, the kick that it deserves. So she gives it a kick, choo, goes up, comes down. OK, the question is, how long was it in the air for? How long was that book airborne? OK, well, actually, we know the path, or we know at least the information about the path of the book when it left the ground and then when it came back down. And it's given by, again, since we have gravity, it's given by a quadratic formula. So let me show it to you. If I let s represent the position off the ground the book is, then s is actually going to be a function of time, depending what time it is. And it turns out it's minus 16 t squared plus 88t plus 2 where t represents seconds. So what this means is the following. If you give me how many, time, how many seconds after she kicked the book, I could plug in that time for t, and this will tell me how high the book actually got, where the book is located. So for example, let's try a very simple example to make sure we really understand what this means. What about when we start? What about the moment she kicks the book? That's a time zero. We're starting. Where is, S located? Where is the book located at time zero? Well, if I plug in a zero for t, then these terms just drop out, and I see two. So that means that it's two feet above the ground. Does that make sense? Well, sure, because you see she was sort of holding the book, and apparently she was holding the book two feet off the ground before she gave it that kick. You see? So that's the location of the book when she started. And then one second later, you can figure out how high the book went. And the book sort of went up, 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 and then came down, 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 down. And I want to know how long was the book in the air. OK, let's think about that. When does the book finally land? What would its distance from the ground be? Well, if you think about it, if the book's going to go up, 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 and then down, 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 boom, the book will finish its journey the moment it touches the ground which means its distance from the ground, which is s, would be 0. It would land. So what I have to do is find out what time makes this thing equal to 0. That's the moment that it landed. So what I do is I set this equal to 0 and solve. So I have minus 16 t squared plus 88t plus 2 equals 0. And you notice one thing I can do immediately, happily, is factor out a common factor of 2 everywhere and then divide it out, which sort of reduces the numbers. And of course, that makes me so happy because I can't deal with big numbers. So I'd have a minus 8t squared plus 44t plus 1 equals 0. And now my mission is to solve that. So of course, what do we do first? Well, we're going to try to factor. Well, this is great. Life is wonderful. Everything is going so well. So happy. Are you happy? I hope you're happy because I'm doing great. All right, now I've got to find some way of putting together, breaking up a minus 8t into two pieces. For example, it could be minus 8t and t. It could be uh, minus 4t and 2t, and so on and so forth. Let's just try, for example, uh, minus 4t and 2t. OK, this tells me these signs are going to be what? Well, I've got to think about this for a second. If I have a, minus, if I have a plus sign here, then these signs are actually going to be the same. And now what's the same going to be? Well, I've got to be actually a little bit careful here, because I see this negative way out in front. So I should be a little bit careful, because that negative is going to actually have an effect on things. So, but the same sign we're going to have here. So let's see. Well, what do you get with 1? I could put like a 1 and a 1, for example. Now, how could I make that combination of 44? This seems like an, an obscenely high number, obscene, given the 1 and the 8 here. In fact, I've got to tell you, this is not looking too good. So remember how wonderful life was just like three seconds ago? It's amazing how things turn. This cannot be factored.
so much for life being wonderful. All right, so what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to bring out ye old quadratic formula. Okay, so let's use the quadratic formula and solve this baby. What do we see? I see t equals, now what's the quadratic formula? Okay, there it is. So what is it? Negative b, which is this coefficient, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. We have to insert that, and remember the players. The role of a is going to be played by minus 8. The role of b is going to be 44. And finally, tonight, in the role of c, we're going to have a modest little person, 1. Let's plug in and see what we get. Negative b, so that's going to be minus 44, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 44 squared, minus 4ac. So that's 4 times a times c. Well, that gives me a negative 8. And I'm subtracting, so I have a plus 4 times 8. So that's all under the square root, all divided by 2a. And 2a is going to be negative 16 in this problem. What a big old mess. OK, so what do we see here? Well, uh, we could clean this up a little teeny bit, I guess. Not much, though. Uh, plus or minus square root. OK, well, let's figure out what that number is. So now I'm going to actually use a calculator, hopefully successfully. We'll see. Time will tell. I'll take 44 and square it, and I'll add to it 4 times 8 and see what that equals. That's going to equal the number 1968, something that is almost in my memory. Shows you how old. I'm so old, I don't even want to get into that right now. It's not good. OK, so there's that number. And uh, what do I do with that? Well, first of all, um, what is this number right here? You can try that on the calculator again. We can bring out the calculator and try that number. And what we'll see is the square root of 1968 actually equals around 44.36 something. So now we have to figure out which of these two answers, if any of them, uh, make sense. T represents the time, right? How long the book has been in the air. So let's see what answers we could possibly have here. This negative sign down there is something that maybe is concerning. This minus sign here is concerning. Which one of these should we pick? Suppose I pick the, pick the positive sign. Let's look at this, that one, Okay, the positive sign. Well, this number is actually a little bit bigger than 44. So that's a positive bigger than 44. And then I subtract 44. So the top is actually going to be positive. But then I'm dividing by negative 16. So the net total here is going to be a negative number. So that means t equals something negative. That means I've gone backwards in time. Well, that's not going to happen. She can't kick up the book, watch it come up and down. It turns out that the book landed before she kicked the book. <laughs> it's not going to happen. All right, so that means that, in fact, the right sign must be the negative sign. And the positive sign must be an extraneous root. So what happens? I have negative 44, and then I subtract off a 44.36 something. And if you do that and divide by 16, you can compute this on a calculator just to get a sense of what this is, you'll see 5.52 something seconds. So the book was airborne for 5.52 seconds. So almost, so about five and a half seconds, roughly speaking. So that's a pretty good kick. So took the book, kicked it up, so forth. Of course, once the book lands, as you can imagine, the book you know, is sort of not looking in too good of condition here. Which brings me to my bonus question, the final bonus question. OK, will the present condition of this book have any effect on the amount that student will receive when she sells it back at the bookstore? And of course, you know the answer is no. No matter how good the condition is, she'll get by a buck fifty for this $80 book. What a great deal. And what a great problem, too. OK, I'll see you at the next problem. <laughs>